Welcome to Scuba Bob's Ocean Quest. Our goal is to educate youth and adults on the importance of our oceans and waterways. Scuba Bob has been diving since 1978 with thousands of dives around the world. The oceans cover 72% of the Earth's surface. 75% of the Earth's oxygen is produced by the oceans of our world. Ocean Quest has been creatively produced to educate youth and adults on marine life and the conservation of both land and water. He and his team will share their passion for the mysteries of this liquid world of our blue planet. On December 14, 2006, the white dolphin was declared extinct. Who will be next? Scuba Bob completed his doctoral dissertation on dolphin communications with disabled divers with a positive outcome between the divers and the dolphin. And today's episode would be diving in a cenote. Our dive will be at Dos Ojos, which is a cenote a few miles south of Playa del Carmen. Today, we're diving with Playa divers. A big shout out to Klaus for providing us with such a great experience. We begin our dive in 10 to 15 feet of water. At no time were we in deeper than 30 feet on this dive. The water is crystal clear, and as you can see, there's lots of rock formations all through this cavern. A cenote is a natural pit or sinkhole resulting from the collapse of limestone bedrock that exposes groundwater. The, reg the regional term is specifically associated with the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico where cenotes were commonly used for water supplies by the ancient Maya and occasionally for sacrificial offerings. The term is derived from words used by the lowland Yucatan Maya to cenote to refer to any location with accessible groundwater. Similar rock siding sinkholes like cenotes are common geographical forms in low at altitude regions, particularly on islands, coastlines and platforms with young post-Paleozoic limestones that have little soil development. The term cenote has also been used to describe similar karst features in other countries such as Cuba and Australia. Cenotes are surface connections to subterranean water bodies, while the best known cenotes are large open water pools measuring tens of meters in diameter such as those in Chichen Itza in Mexico. The greatest number of cenotes are smaller, sheltered sites and do not necessarily have any surface exposed water. Sub cenotes are only found through one meter small holes created by tree roots with human access through enlarged holes, such as Cenote Chuha, Tamachiha, and Mutumha, which are all near Tulum. There are at least 6,000 cenotes in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Cenote water is often clear as the water comes from rainwater filtered slowly through the ground and therefore contains very little suspended particle matter. The groundwater flow rate within a cenote may be very slow. In many cases, cenotes are areas where sections of the cave roof have collapsed, revealing an underlying cave system and the water flow rate may be much faster, up to 10 kilometers or six miles per day. The Yucatan cenotes attract cavern and cave divers who have documented extensive flooded cave systems through them, some of which have been explored for lengths up to 930 miles or more. Cenotes are formed by dissolution of rock and the resulting subsurface void which may or may not be linked to an active cave system and the subsequent structural collapse. Rock that falls into the water below is slowly removed by further dissolution, creating space for more collapsed blocks. It is likely that the rate of collapse 
increases during periods when the water table is below the ceiling of the void, since the rock ceiling is no longer buoyantly supported by the water in the void. Cenotes may be fully collapsed, creating an open water pool or partially clapped with some portion of the rock overhang above the water. The stereotypical cenote often resembles small circular ponds, measuring some tens of meters in diameter with sheer rock walls. Most cenotes, however, require some degree of stooping or crawling to access the water. The north or northwest of Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, the cenotes generally overlie vertical voids penetrating 160 to 330 feet below the modern water table. However, very few of these cenotes appear to be connected with horizontally extensive underground river systems, with water flow through them being more likely dominated by aquifer matrix and fractured flows. In contrast, the cenotes along the Caribbean coast of the Yucatan Peninsula within the state of Quantana Roo often provide access to extensive underwater cave systems such as Sistema Ox Belha, Sistema Sac Akdun, Sistema Noche Na Conchi, and Sistema Dos Ojo. The Yucatan Peninsula contains a vast coastal aquifer system, which is typically density stratified. The infiltrating rainwater floats on top of the higher density saline water intruding from the coastal margins. The whole aquifer is therefore a landlocked but connected to an ocean, where a cenote or flooded cave provides deep enough access into the aquifer, the interface between fresh and saline water may be reached. The density interface between the fresh and saline water is a halocline, which means a sharp change in salt concentration over a small change in depth. Mixing the fresh and saline water results in a blurry, swirly effect caused by refraction between the different densities of fresh and saline waters. Since Dos Ojos does not connect to the ocean, we will not be experiencing a halo climb today. As we go further into the cenote, we begin to see some of the majestic formations created by this cave system. We are seeing stalagmites and stalactites. Stalactites form exclusively on ceilings as dissolved minerals drop down in the form of mineralized water, whereas stalagmites form while the dripping mineralized water touches the floor and deposits its minerals. Plants and animals are generally scarcer than that in the ocean. However, marine animals do thrive in caves. In caverns, one can spot mollusks, guppies, catfish, small eels, and frogs. In the most secluded and darkest cenotes, the plants have evolved to resemble those of many cave-dwelling species. For example, many animals don't have pigmentation and they often are blind so they are equipped with long feelers so that they can find food and make their way around in the dark. Although cenotes are found widely throughout much of the Yucatan Peninsula, a higher density circular al alignment of cenotes overlies the measurement rim of the Chishalub Crater. The Chishalub Crater is an impact crater buried beneath the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Its center is located offshore near the town of Chickasub, after which the crater is named. It was formed when a large asteroid or comet about 6.8 to 50.3 miles in diameter known as the Chickaloop Impactor struck the Earth. The date of the impact coincides precisely with the Crustaceous Paleogene boundary slightly more than 66 million years ago and a widely accepted theory is that the worldwide climate distribution from the event was the cause of the Crustaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, a mass extinction in which 75% of the plants and animal species on the Earth became extinct, including all non-avian dinosaurs. 
In 2001 and 2002, archaeological expeditions in the Yucatan discovered three human skeletons. One of them was carbon dated to be 13,600 years old. Seven years later, an expedition exploring a section of the Sistema Actun Hu, known as the Pit Hoyo Negro, at a depth of 187 feet, the divers located the remains of a mastodon and a human skull that might be the oldest evidence of human habitation in the region. The Yucatan Peninsula has almost no rivers and only a few lakes, and those are often marshy. The widely distributed cenotes are the only perennial source of potable water and have long been the principal source of water in much of the region. Major Maya settlements required access to adequate water supplies and therefore cities including the famous Chichen Itza were built around these natural wells. Some cenotes like the sacred cenote of Chichen Itza played an important role in the Maya rites. Believing that the pools were gateways to the afterlife, the Maya sometimes threw valuable items into them. The discovery of golden sacrificial artifacts in some of these cenotes led the archaeological exploration of most cenotes in the first part of the 20th century. Edward Herbert Thomas, an American diplomat who had bought the Chichen Itza site, began dredging the sacred cenote there in 1904. He discovered human skeletons and sacrificial objects confirming a local legend, the Cult of the Cenote, involving human sacrifice to the rain god Cheak by ritually casting the victims and objects into the cenote. The remains of this cultural heritage are protected by UNEXO Convention on the Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage. As we look around, we can just imagine what this cave system looked like prior to being submerged. It must have been overwhelming for the Maya, and it's easy to understand why and how they came up with the religious meanings of this vast beauty of these cave systems. Carl Griffin, our trip leader from the Woodlands Dive Center, is an avid cave diver. He has enjoyed the adrenaline rush for cave diving for over 19 years. In addition to being a cave diver, he's also a cave diving instructor. If you're interested, give him a call. Cenotes have attracted cavern and cave divers, and there is an organized effort to explore and map these underwater systems. They are public or private and sometimes considered as national natural parks. Great care should be taken to avoid spoiling these fragile ecosystems when diving. In Mexico, the Quantana Ru Speleological Survey maintains a list of the longest and deepest water field or drive caves within the state boundaries. When cavern diving, one must be able to see natural lights the entire time that one is exploring the cavern. During a cave dive, one passes a point where daylight can penetrate and one follows a safety guide for an exit of the cave. Things change quite dramatically once moving from a cavern dive into a cave dive. Too many divers, even experienced ones, have died from ignoring safety recommendations. As our friend Hal Watt says, plan your dive and dive your plan. No exceptions. Contrary to cenote cavern diving, cenote cave diving requires special equipment and training, which means certification in cave diving. However, both cavern and cave diving require detailed briefings. 
diving experience and weight adjustment to freshwater buoyancy. The cenotes are usually filled with rather cool, fresh water. Cenote divers must be weary of possible halo climbs, which produces a blurry vision until they reach more of the homogeneous area. People have asked me many times, hey, how do I become a cave diver? Well, the first thing you'll need to do is be able to save up a lot of money because it's going to cost quite a bit. You're going to need to duplicate your system at least two to three times. Along with dry suits, specialized lights, different types of reels, I would say it's going to cost a hefty ten dollars to $15,000 to get into cave diving. I really don't care about how much you spend. That's not really the big issue. The issue is safety. Safety has to come first on all dives, especially cave and cavern diving. There goes one of the certified cave divers. He's got side mount tube tanks, one for himself and one as a backup for a buddy. At this point, we're experiencing a nice portion of our dive. We see a lot of creative formations all through the cave at this time. As you can see, we're close to the surface. Now we can see a lot of stalactites and stalagmites. Remember, stalactites hang from the ceiling and stalagmites come from the bottom. It takes a thousand years for a stalactite or a stalagmite to grow one inch. It looks like the group has found something unusual up ahead. Ed has his camera out. I wonder what it is. Well, I don't think we're going to get a chance to see it on this dive. I'm impressed with this large chamber. It's awesome. I'm impressed with this large chamber. It's awesome. That's a cool formation. It looks like the stalactites and the stalagmites have joined and connected to each other. It looks like everyone's enjoying themselves on this dive. And there's Ed, my buddy. I think he's having a great time. The water is so clear, it looks like they're flying in the air. This is pretty cool. This formation looks like a frozen waterfall. 
With the size of it, I'd estimate it to be over 10,000 years old. Wow, that's amazing. That's a cool looking wall. It's amazing how all this stuff is designed the way they got it. I don't even know how they do it. It's so cool. I can see some light up ahead. I wonder if that's our exiting point. How would you like to have a ceiling like that in your house? It looks like we're going to be wrapping this dive up in a few minutes. I hope you've enjoyed this cenote dive. It's been a cool dive. I really do love Dos Ojos. It's one of my favorite uh, cenotes to dive in. These structures are amazing. And it's important to realize that the formation of these cenotes took millions of years. Dos Ojos has remained in the top 10 longest underwater cave systems in the world. Dos Ojos contains the deepest known cave passage in Guantana Roo, with 396 feet of depth located at the Cenote Pit. The name Dos Ojos is Spanish for two eyes and refers to two neighboring cenotes which connect into a very large cavern zone shared by the two. These two cenotes appear like two big eyes into the underground. The water temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year and the maximum de depth the Dos Ojos Cenotes is approximately 33 feet. The water is exceptionally clear. It looks like we made it. I hope you've enjoyed this show on cenote diving. It's always nice to come inland to dive the cenotes. It allows you to wash off your gear with clean water and not have to fight the current. The water's so clear that it does look like Ed's flying home in the air. I guess he does have a superpower of being able to breathe underwater. It looks like more of the groups are coming in for a landing. I hope they had a good dive.
this is one of the best views of the cenote with the light coming in through the opening it makes an awesome blue color and it's a welcome sight after the dive It looks like we have some snorkelers enjoying the water, so if you're not a diver, you can enjoy the jungle in this crystal clear water. It's easy to pick out the cave dive guides because they have side mount tanks for added safety. I know Carl, our trip guide, wanted to use side mounts because he is a cave dive instructor and wanted to be prepared if he saw anyone having problems. Well, maybe next time. Well, it looks like we're only a few feet underwater and it's about time to surface. Heads are popping out on the surface, and we will need to get in line to get out onto the dock. This was a great dive, and I really did enjoy coming back to Dos Ojos here in Mexico. I want to thank my dive guide Sergio and his boss Klaus for showing us a great time. They did a great job with giving a good pre-dive briefing and helping us through this underwater maze of Dos Ojos. It's time to take off our fins and our equipment and make our walk up the stairs out of the cave entrance into the jungle. One last view of Dos Ojos, Vial Condias, my friend, until we meet again. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Scuba Bob's Ocean Quest and will return again with us next week as we come back for another underwater expedition. I want to thank Woodlands Dive Center for helping us put this trip together and looking forward to the new destinations to come. A special thanks to Playa Divers and Klaus and his dive guides. Good job. Our trip leader, Carl, did a great job and kept us safe. So a special thanks to Carl and we also want to thank his guests who followed with us on this trip. Ed, I want to thank you for being such a great dive buddy. And I want to thank Raymond for his, his added support in helping put together this episode of Scuba Bob's Ocean Quest. This is Scuba Bob saying keep her clean, keep it safe, and keep it smart until we dive again. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week as I bring this liquid world into your living room to help you understand the importance of ocean conservation. <laughs>